Hey guys, it's Marinette, and, well, I was assigned to do a presentation on COVID-19 because Nino took bird disease, so, or, no, bird flu? Something like that. I don't know. I studied COVID-19, so that's that. All right, so, what is corona? A coronavirus is the name for a large set of illnesses, including things like the common cold and other respiratory infections. This COVID-19 is considered a novel coronavirus. The term novel means it's a new form of the virus. So where and how did it begin? It actually, we started seeing cases of it on New Year's Eve 2019 in Wuhan, which is in the Hubei province of China. From there, it spread from person to person. But how does it spread? This virus is really transmissible and can spread easily from person to person, even before a person develops symptoms. Some places say that you can develop symptoms, you know, two days after making contact with the virus, but others can last up to seven or eight days before they show any symptoms. It's carried on respiratory droplets when we talk, sneeze, and cough, and these can land on surfaces or in someone's mouth or nose. Even poop is considered something that has respiratory droplets on it, so if you wipe your butt and then you don't properly wash your hands and you touch the counter and then someone else touches the counter, that fecal matter can, we're finding out, transfer COVID-19 to someone else, so that's disgusting. Wash your hands, you gross people. Anyway, when it comes to respiratory droplets, six feet is the magic distance. That's how far these tiny infected droplets can travel. Being within six feet of someone who is sick can get you or your personal space contaminated with the COVID-19, also known as coronavirus. When droplets land on surfaces, we pick them up with our hands and transfer them to our eyes, mouth, and nose when we touch our faces. This is why hand hygiene is so important. Good hand hygiene means washing our hands, not just after we're using the restroom or before we're eating, but regularly throughout the day. It was interesting because Ollie and I had a discussion the other day, this is kind of off topic, about whether or not Ladybug and Cat Noir need to wash their hands because their suits are like magical spandex. It was really interesting. But anyway, respiratory secretions, think like snot, are also infectious, so cover your coughs and sneezes and use disposable tissues. Throw them away when you're done and wash your hands afterwards. Keep your work surfaces clean and wipe off your keyboard and your phone. I can't stress it enough, guys. Wipe your phones. Okay? So what are the symptoms? And is it deadly? It usually causes flu-like symptoms. Some patients, especially like the elderly and people with chronic health issues, develop a severe form of pneumonia. So one of my older friends, she's like 50 or something, they're treating her for bronchitis before they can treat her for COVID-19. All right, part of that is just because we don't have enough tests available worldwide. But also, because of the different symptoms that you get, it's easy to misdiagnose in its early forms as things like allergies or bronchitis. Now, patients develop symptoms like the fever, body and muscle aches, a dry cough, Usually, they can get a sore throat, but it's not the same typical uh, symptoms as, like, the regular flu. Um, if the fever is above 100.4, that's a good warning sign. Dry coughs. Some people have stated that after coughing, it feels like you were kicked in the leg, or kicked in the ribs, excuse me, or there's, like, cement in the lungs. Other people feel just fine, even though they've tested positive for the COVID-19, because different bodies react differently. Some people won't get as sick, but it's still important not to be out and about so as not to spread the disease. So I was watching an, some guy on YouTube, actually, and he was talking about how the flu usually infects 1.3 other people um, in its lifespan outside of the body, whereas the COVID-19 can infect like seven people. And that's why there's so many more cases. Um, and it's why, even though you might not be sick, you can carry it to so many other people, and that's why it's so dangerous. A minority of patients will get worse instead of better, and that usually happens five to seven days of illness in, and these patients will have more shortness of breath and a worsening cough. If that happens to you, make sure you're going in to see the doctor or even in an emergency room, but make sure to call first so they know you're coming. How can I tell if it's not just allergies? 
So, a stuffy and runny nose aren't common symptoms of the new coronavirus. If you're having those symptoms, then you probably have something else. It's not as though the flu or the common cold just disappeared during this pandemic. They still exist, and you still might be sick from them. All right, but it may be worthwhile to take a daily antihistamine so your allergy symptoms are kept at bay. Then you can better tell the difference between allergies and a bad infection with COVID-19. Is everyone at risk for catching COVID-19? Yes, it doesn't appear that anyone is naturally immune to this particular virus, and there's no reason to believe anybody has antibodies that would normally protect them. But children appear to be among those who are least li likely to have a bad outcome from contracting the disease. Some people do get a little sicker. It looks like about only 20% of people who contract this novel coronavirus, again meaning new, need to be hospitalized. The other 80% get what feels like a bad cold and recover at home. And it has to do with underlining medical conditions. So, with that said, some otherwise healthy people do seem to be getting sicker from this infection than what we would expect. We don't understand why that is or what might be different about these patients. So if you do get COVID-19, but you get sicker and sicker instead of better and better, talk to your doctor and maybe visit an ER, but call first to make sure they know you're coming in. What is social distancing and should I be doing it? Social distancing is one way that can be used to slow the spread of infections. This specifically refers to different ways of keeping people separating. Increasing the distance between desks at school or standing farther away from the next person in line at the grocery store are both social distancing. And as is working from home instead of an office and choosing to elbow bump instead of shake hands. Canceling group gatherings and avoiding crowded places are also crucial forms of distancing. Social distancing is a way we can all work together to spread ourselves out from other people and keep ourselves from spreading infection. We shouldn't be staying at home or distancing because we're scared. The individual risk to any one of us is low. However, we should be distancing because we need to protect those of us who are at higher risk. The speed at which this disease spreads throughout our community makes a big difference in terms of how many people are sick at the same time. If many people are sick at once, this could easily overwhelm our hospital system, and we may not have enough beds for all the patients that need care. The only way we can prevent this from happening is by taking actions to stop the spread of the disease. Seemingly healthy people are shedding the virus to others, but we don't have a great sense of how many asymptomatic people, meaning people who have it but they don't realize they do because they're not showing symptoms, are walking around infected with COVID-19 because we aren't testing those people. It'll eventually become more evident, though, and will influence and likely lower the information we're seeing about the death rate from coronavirus. As usual, like any school presentation, my sources are here. A special thank you goes out to you, Chicago Medicine, for helping me with my school project. And Nino, stop making that face. Seriously, dude. This is serious. Thanks, and, uh, I think Alia is up next. Hello. So I just wanted to pop in here and say a couple of things quickly. Uh, due to the nature of my job, it is not a surprise that I ended up contracting the COVID-19 virus. I am on the up and up for recovery. Um, overall, my symptoms were very mild, which doesn't surprise me. I have very strong lungs and I've spent the last three or four months uh, training my body to respond better to higher BPMs and just improve my lung capacity so I can do things like go on runs. So I'm very, very pleased with my body and how it's been able to handle the COVID-19. With that said, if I didn't know if there was a pandemic going on, I wouldn't know that I had contracted and I wouldn't have sought out a doctor because my symptoms were, they just seemed like a really bad cold or potentially the flu. Um, and that's one of the dangerous things about Corona. I don't think we need to panic about it, but it is dangerous because it is silent until it is not. Um, and the number of people who are carrying it and they don't realize it. I don't care about me getting sick. Clearly, I'm fine. My sister, who also contracted corona, she had a really, really rough time, but it was it was like being sick really, really badly. Uh, she got over it. She's on the up and up. She's recovering now. She's fine. It just sucked while she had it. Um, but if that ended up touching our grandmother, for example, chances are she would she would die. She wouldn't be able to handle it. So I strongly encourage all of you to self-quarantine um, if you have the capability. And thank you to those who are mandatory workers now. 
So I will catch you in the next one.